I spoke with 13 year old Sean Howell's aunt and she tells me she is numb. The family just can't understand how this happened. 71 shots were fired just outside this bar early this morning. You can see the chalk marks left on the ground as police try to count up all of the shell casings. In total, five people were shot, and so far police say they haven't made any arrests. The victim was shot right here in the city of Cleveland, but drove himself a mile away. He stopped just across the street from the city line into the city of Euclid. Now, as soon as fans found out the kid from Akron is going to be taking his talents elsewhere, of course they came just outside the queue to see the poster. A lot of people wanted to get their picture, their selfie with the poster. Neighbors tell me they figured this land would be developed someday, but they're concerned that that this road wouldn't be able to handle the traffic for the commercial development. That 45 year old woman has burns all over her body. She is in critical condition. Neighbors tell me it sounded like a bomb went off. They say their home shook. They heard a loud boom. As you can see, crews are still working to clear the debris to be absolutely certain there was no one else left inside that home. Just being able to see golf's best right here in our own backyard. Well, of course, everyone is going to miss that. The postal worker managed to get the woman's keys. He went to a neighbor and asked them to call 911. Going door to door, showing the little boy's picture, hoping someone would know who he is. Well, this is the center of where the storm hit last night. You can actually see this tree that was snapped off. Now, Burger King workers tell me they can actually hear the tornado come up through this creek, jump over the street into that parking lot. Then it started throwing cars as if they were toys. Watch closely to the top left of your screen. There are two cars, both white, that will get swept up and spiraled by an EF1 tornado. The car on the left skids, slides, and is slammed onto its roof. The car on the right rolls, but lands back on its tires. My poor co-worker was outside, and she was like, I was holding on to the wall. You can see the whirling of the tornado whip through the parking lot. And all of a sudden, like there was just like all of our windows and doors blew open, and the lights started flickering, and then everything just shut down inside the Burger King. They took cover. It pretty much like went through the drive through. Here's another view. The light on the ceiling starts falling off and carts start blowing through the parking lot. There's a flash of light. Then you can see people start running through the parking lot. Watch this small child and their parent running for cover inside the grocery store. It lasted for like 30 to 45 seconds. Like it doesn't seem that long, but like when you're in here, it's a really long time. It took us by surprise because I mean, you hear the sirens, but you just never think it's going to hit in your area. As quickly as the twister blew through, it was gone. We were actually surprised because we had heard the sirens and we got the notice that the tornado was coming through or that there was a possible tornado. And then when we drove through, we were kind of surprised that it actually had touched down right here. Yeah, so the good news, even with the 90 mile per hour winds and carts blowing around, no one was hurt. Of course, they spent the day cleaning up today. There was some damage to the roof here at the Burger King. There's some siding missing, but they tell me, you know, as long as no one was hurt, everything is okay. Reporting live, Lacey Crisp, Cleveland 19 News. I had no idea he would message me later last night saying he was the suspect and police had him surrounded. Just before 9 o'clock Monday night, I got a tip. Police were surrounding a house for a possible suspect from the triple murder in North Royalton. Almost an hour later, I got a message from a man who was friends with the victim, a man who I tried to meet up with for an interview earlier that day. Here is part of our exchange. George Brinkman said to me, Valley Forge Drive, Brunswick, hostage situation, please come. Cops came for me. I'm barricaded. No lies. And I told him, get out of the house, hands up. I called Brunswick police and made sure they knew Brinkman was talking to me on Facebook Messenger. They told me to continue talking to him to encourage him to go to police. I said, can you tell me what happened? And he responded, I'm being blamed for Sue and her daughter's death. I had a broken hand since Friday. How could I control three adults with a broken hand? He messaged me from just before 10 until 3 a.m. and was taken into custody around 5.30 a.m. I tried to get him to talk to police. I said, please continue to talk to them. Please let me know if I can do anything. George responded, just let everyone know that I would never hurt Sue or the kids. I loved them too much. And just to be clear, when I asked him for an interview, I did not know that he was a suspect. We talked to dozens of people on Facebook like Brinkman every day for stories. Now, it was hard for me as a mom of two daughters when I realized I was talking to a man accused 
of killing a mom and her two daughters. It was an unnerving evening for me. Uh, unnerving for sure. Uh, great job keeping your composure in, in all of this. So I'm fascinated. The police said to go ahead and, and keep communicating with him as this was all going on. Yeah, he was responding to me. I don't know if he was responding to them, but they told me to keep encouraging him to talk to them, to try to go out of the house and leave with them so we could end peacefully. He was telling me later, like, goodbye, this is it. So mm -hmm. I was worried how it was going to end. I was glad to hear at 530 in the morning that he went peacefully. And again, at one point, you told him, go out with your hands up, try to try to end this. Okay. Right. All right, very good. Lacey, Chris, great job. He kept a certain distance away for obvious reasons. But Lacey, uh, fill us in on what you know. Yeah, and actually they just moved us back not too long ago, uh, about another block away from where the house actually is. If you can see uh, down the street, the SWAT team, U.S. Marshals, Cleveland Police have all been on the scene a little over three hours. Now, they are looking for Tommy Griffin III. He is a former Cleveland police officer. He was arrested back in January for assaulting, kidnapping, and raping a woman. He is set to go on trial on Monday, but on Saturday he cut his GPS ankle monitor and hasn't been seen since. Now, I spoke with his daughter yesterday. He was staying with her, and when she left for work on Saturday afternoon, she said she talked to him. He said he was going to make pierogies for dinner, so she had no clue that he was going to take off. She said his car was still in the parking lot of her apartment when she got the call saying, hey, do you know where your dad is? His GPS monitor had just been cut. Fast forward to today, about 11 o'clock, we got a call from the U.S. Marshal saying that they had a house surrounded. Potentially, Griffin was inside. Now, on scene, we have been able to hear here uh, from the bullhorn police saying, you know, come out with your hands up. Can you at least come to the window, wave, let us know that you're okay. We don't know for sure that he is inside, but they do have this house surrounded. And I can tell you there are a handful of schools in this area. They have all been placed on lockdown. There are police officers at those schools. Parents have been notified to make sure that they know what is going on and that all of the students are safe at this time. But again, we have the U.S. Marshals. We have the Cleveland SWAT team surrounding this house, hopefully trying to bring out a former Cleveland police officer, Tommy Griffin III. All right, we'll continue to stay on that and check in with you as well. Lacey Chris from our affiliate WOIO. Lacey, thank you. I like baseball. Julia Lieb wanted to make her boys' first Cleveland Indians game memorable, and she knocked it out of the park. Nine-year-old Sasha was set up to play Deal or, or No Deal. I thought I was just going to win money. But You're Sasha won something even today. better. Right, Welcome, Tim Lieb from his year-long deployment. His dad, Chief Petty Officer Tim Lieb, has been in Guantanamo Bay with the Coast Guard for the past year. I guess it was a challenging year um, for the boys especially. Um, it, was, uh, it was hard, a lot of sleepless nights. But he surprised the boys by showing up to the tribe game. I was like, wait, can you tell me? And then I look behind me and my dad's there. It was Tim's game plan, and Julia couldn't even tell friends and family about the big surprise. Well, Jonah was so scared he was hiding, so I was just hoping that Jonah wouldn't be so scared that he wouldn't hug his dad, but as soon as he saw him, he melted. I cried a little. So did we, Sasha. So did we. What was the best part about the game? Dad. After that emotional reunion, the family only got a couple of hours together before Chief Petty Officer Lieb had to go back to his base for a couple of days. But he'll be back for good this weekend, and the boys tell me they already have plans for him. I'm probably going to snuggle with him a lot. Getting answers, Lacey Crisp, Cleveland 19 News.